and we are live. Hopefully this will be a good stream tonight. Hopefully everything is working okay. Again, blame it on YouTube last time, but I think we got it all straightened out. I'm using a different camera tonight. How is everybody? It's uh, right now, it's May 5th, Cinco de Mayo, and I hope everybody's doing okay. I'm using a different microphone, so let me know. I could switch to the regular microphone I have here, but I wanna try my uh, video, my Go from Rode. So I'm, I'm curious to see how this is all gonna turn out because we had a few, hiccups last week but hopefully we're better this week so uh everybody i'm happy to be here uh we have some news tonight uh obviously mac, uh, mac uh, the, <laughs> apple has released the new macbook pro uh, 13 inch a little bit disappointing in my opinion but we'll talk more about that and i have coming to the studio the samsung <clears throat> excuse me the samsung galaxy book flex now this is coming tomorrow, and I wanted to sort of talk about it a little bit. I saw a few of the bigger YouTubers, I guess, got their pre-production units or their, they were seeded out to these people. I did not get one from Samsung. I asked a, a number of times, but that's not what's going to happen here. Looks like the bandwidth is looking good, so you should be able to do this 1080p if you're having any problems bump it down to 720p or 480p because I watched the replay from last week and it was perfect. So I have a feeling it was on YouTube's part. So I don't know if you just need to bump it down, but I'm doing this at 1080p. So let me know if there's any issues. Uh, we'll have to just deal with it. Anyway, so Apple just released the 2020 MacBook 13. But before we get to that, let's say hello to a few people. I see Paul is here uh, agreeing with handbrake. We'll get, <laughs> handbrake or is it handquake? <laughs> okay, good to see you. Uh, thank you, Paul, how are you? Um, then we got handquake here. How are you, my friend? Um, good to see you from Las Vegas, of course. Um, we have Fan Lee, who's always here, it seems, and good to see you, my friend. How are you? I saw Tech Realm was here earlier. How are you, Tech Realm? We'll talk about whether or not this is going to be disappointing or not, uh, but we'll all get into it tonight. Okay, uh, we see Tiger. Let's see, Tiger. Tiger not Tiger X nine sixty six. I don't know why their names or names are not coming on now. I don't know. I can't figure this out, but. We at least get your avatar this time and we get your quote. Oh, you know why? Because it's the background. Um, let me see if I can just change one thing. And if I can make this lighter, we'll see what happens. And I think that's better. Okay, that, that should be better now. Okay, so at least we can see the, the, the names of who's, who's here because these are all great to see you. Um, is there anybody else I missed? If not, you would have already let me know, I'm sure. How are you, my friend, Matt? Hey, uh, six Maxwell 99, how are you? Okay, well, so far looking like the bandwidth is very good right now. I'm on ethernet, I'm not doing Wi-Fi. Uh, let me know if it sounds okay as well. Uh, what we are talking about today is the, and by the way, before we get to that, I will be dropping a new video, and I don't know, maybe I'll just do it right after this live stream because I would like to get a lot, nice uh, velocity view going if I maybe guys can watch it as soon as it's done. It's the Lenovo ThinkPad L13 Yoga, and it's a pretty good ThinkPad. So uh, stay tuned to af after this live stream, I'm gonna make it live, and I want you to all to check it out. So I'll put the link when it's ready to go towards the end of the stream. And good to see you, 212 Admin, how are you? Okay, all right, so let's, uh, we'll get to your questions in a moment, so keep them coming, I'll try to get to them all. And if you have a super chat, of course, much appreciated here. Uh, as you know, help support the channel. Now, I'm going to um, bring this in. And so this is, and I can put this down below. So what we have here right now, of course, is the MacBook Pro 13. Apple just announced it. And I'm kind of disappointed, to be honest with you, because I thought this would have been the one where we'd see the 14-inch MacBook 
Pro. They went from the 15.4 inch we saw last year to a 16 inch MacBook Pro. We didn't get it this time. And there's also a couple of things, and Apple's up to their old tricks. So we'll, we'll talk about it. So this is a very deceiving um, cost. This says $1,299 US. But when you look at the fine print, that only gets you a, um, and let me take that out for now. It only gets you an eighth generation CPU. So Apple's up to their old tricks again, because if you look to see what the prices are, and I'll, let, me, let me skip ahead, you can see that the price that you really wanna go for is $1,799. And the reason is that will give you the 10th generation Ice Lake processor that we would want. We don't want eighth generation. And why anybody would spend $1,300 plus tax here in the United States for an eighth generation CPU is beyond me. Having said that, Apple also recently released, and I recently reviewed the MacBook Air. So this is a real scam, in my opinion, what Apple's pulling, pulling on the people, they're pulling the wool over their eyes. What they're trying to do is a bait and switch. They're saying, oh yeah, you can get it at $1299, you're gonna get 256 gigs of storage, but you're not getting the latest processor, and if you want the latest processor, well, you're gonna have to spend $1,800 plus tax, and that to me is ridiculous and they kept the screen size the same. So what do you do? I mean, do you go for this? I personally do not. And the reason is you might as well just get a MacBook Air, spend a little bit less, and you're gonna get the same keyboard, of course. And that's the other big news. They went with the, um, they got rid of the, the butterfly keyboard and they went with the maglev, maglev, they went with the scissor style keyboard that we just saw with the MacBook Air. So that to me is, and you can see the keyboard clearly there. Um, and, and, and it's good to see that they improved the keyboard, but then again, eighth generation CPU, no screen size increase, not good in my opinion. So, uh, but I'm curious to know what you guys think about it. So uh, just cur out of curiosity, let me know and we'll get to your comments in a moment. So what you're getting here, again, they're saying up to 10th generation. Again, if you go for that entry level model, you're now only getting, you're only getting eighth generation and you are getting more storage. They bumped it up to 256 as opposed to that paltry 128, which was a joke. And you can now get it with 32, you could also get it with 32 gigabytes of RAM. And you can also configure it up to four, uh, what is it, four terabytes of store, four terabytes, four gig, yeah, four terabytes, that was right. Four terabytes of SSD storage, which a lot of people want. But then again, you're gonna pay a hefty premium. So let's get some of your questions in there. Paul is saying, um, Apple is really pulling a scam and a half. I agree that the old processor is unacceptable at that price, absolutely unacceptable. And I just think Apple is just, they're doing, they're, they're up to their old tricks. And we shouldn't be surprised, this is what they do. And again, whether it's not to cannibalize any I, Apple MacBook Air sales, Apple MacBook Pro sales or even iPad sales, they do the same thing with the, the touch screens. They don't put any touch screens. And by the way, I don't want to see this touch bar. Who cares about the touch bar? I've never used it. And I've had, have it, I've had it on a MacBook Pro since 2016 and I never used it. So really disappointing. And I agree, Tech Realm, very disappointing. And Handquake, I, I agree. Why the hell are they keeping that 13 inch? Go to the Ford, and by the way, those who are gonna buy it are gonna be pissed off because they're gonna be, because I have a feeling we're gonna see a 14 inch this year. I really do, probably towards the fall, towards uh, back to school season, or rather, yeah, back to school, or even towards the holiday season maybe. But the fact that they would actually do this refresh now and not go to the 14 inch display is ridiculous. Now. I, I really, I, it's beyond me. I was really expecting a 14 inch and we didn't get it. So Apple's again, up to their old tricks. And Ads is asking, is the base variant MacBook Pro 13 worth it for programmers? Um, I, yeah, look, I guess, I don't know. I don't have one to test, but I did test last year the eighth generation model 
Oh, that has the 8th generation Intel CPU. And it was fine. And I guess it would be good for programming. I don't see it would be a big problem. Depends what you're programming, of course. But uh, I would go with the 15-inch MacBook Pro. You get the GPU in that. And you get more horsepower, of course. So that would be my opinion. Um... What's the most, fan? You, you come up with the best questions. <laughs> What's the most overpriced laptop I reviewed? Well, here's the thing. We got to qualify what is overpriced because I think a lot of it is overpriced. Um, I, I reviewed, what was it? Um, I reviewed a, wasn't it a workstation that was like $6,000? But it was a great laptop. It was a great workstation. I, I think it was the... Um, if I'm not mistaken, the P73 maybe from ThinkPad, but don't quote me on that. Uh, it was very, very expensive. But again, it's not average. It's not targeted towards your average consumer. I think Apple prices are are ridiculously high, artificially high when you compare it to the Windows uh, equivalent, of course. Uh, Tech Realm, I would never buy this scam. The Dell XPS 13 is a better deal, and yeah, that's a good point about the Dell XPS 13. Um, and I have that here. Let me bring in the other camera. Um, let me see how we're going to bring this in. And I have it right here. And the Dell XPS 13, in my opinion, and I want to get out of that. Let me just uh, go there, go back to the cameras, and yeah, there we go. We could swap it out. Let me move this over here. Getting a little bit better. Okay, so we have, the, we have a few things here, but we see the Dell XPS 13, as Tech Realm pointed out. This is, listen, you're going to spend $1,800. I would go for this over that MacBook Pro 13 inch that gives you the same processor, uh, but skimps on a lot of other areas and really, really disappointing on Apple's part. Here you get, first of all, with the Dell XPS 13, you, you get a, a touch display. You don't get that with the MacBook Pro. Um, you get a really good keyboard in its own right. Look at that touch display, gorgeous, really bright, uh, you can get close to 600 nits if you follow my last few live streams. We talked about that. Um, really beautiful display. Look at those bezels compared to the MacBook 13, MacBook Pro 13. You know, this is so much better in my opinion. And I know people are going to say, why am I hating on Apple? I know all the Apple fanboys are going to come at me hard like they did. Um, so, okay, that's fine. That's fine. But Pound for pound, I think, or no pun intended, this is the better laptop in my opinion. Um, yeah, you may, you get four Thunderbolt 3 ports if you go for that $1,800 MacBook Pro 13, but not an issue for me because this is my thin and light travel laptop. When we are able to travel, I get enough with these two, and if I want to add a, a hub, you can, just like you would with a Mac. So I'm really liking this, and I think this is the better deal in my opinion. Let's get some more questions. Um, oh, Tally Ho Tech is here. Yes. Okay, good. Uh, good to see my man. <laughs> how are you doing, mate? Uh, we're just talking about the MacBook Pro 13 and how ridiculous it is with what the scam Apple's pulling on people again. I love, listen, don't get me wrong. You know I love Apple, but, and I love their products and I use them but I got to call them out on this. The entry level 1299, you get an eighth generation processor here in 2020 is a joke. It's embarrassing and Apple should be embarrassed. And yeah, okay, so they're giving you 256 in terms of storage. Okay, they should have had that from the beginning. They should have never had 128. So you know what I'm talking about. Apple does 28 on the new one, but agree XPS is better. Yes, they, so they are using the 28 watt CPU, but again, you know what, pound for pound, I would go with this. This is definitely uh, something I would go with. Let me change out the color on this because now that we're out of there, we can maybe go with a different color. Let's save that. Let's see how it turns out so we could read it a little bit better. And by the way, if anybody who's not subscribed to Tally Ho Tech, check him out. He's fantastic. 
Uh, and for those of you joining us late, we have 69 of you in the live stream. I will be getting tomorrow the Samsung Galaxy Book Flex finally. And we'll talk more about that in the second half of tonight's live stream. So stay tuned. We're going to talk more about that. As is bringing up a really good point, why is Apple using a three-year-old processor? Any other company would have sold the same laptop for $700. Uh, excellent point. Uh, that was exactly what I'm saying. Uh, mediocre update for sure. Tallyho Tech, really mediocre update. And why didn't they go with the 14-inch display? Are they they're holding back on that? Who knows? Maybe the pandemic is certainly playing into that. Uh, again, I'll get it into the studio. I will review it, but I am, you know, I'm just not excited about this upgrade. When is the new Spectre 2020 coming in your showroom? Uh, I have the, uh, just a little between you and me, I have it coming, it's, it's coming towards the end of May, so just stay tuned. And we'll leave it at that. Uh, if, you, if you don't use any Apple products, you don't lose anything. I, uh, you, okay, <laughs> if I understand you correctly, um, I guess you don't lose anything. Listen, let, let's get something clear. I like Apple products. I'm doing this live stream on my 2017 iMac uh, 5K iMac. Uh, I use the MacBook Pro for about four years to edit my videos. Um, I use Apple products. I have an iPad 12.9 um, inch 2018. I use Apple products. So I cannot be accused of being one fan or the other. I'm platform agnostic. So uh, just so you guys know. They're doing that, Elliot, because they're selling old technology for a higher profit. They're getting these processors very cheap and they're making a big margin on them. And that's pretty, pretty, you know, obviously evident that what they're doing. The 2 on 2 admin says, Tally Ho broke the XPS 17 story early and he did a fantastic job. I saw your videos on that, Tally Ho. Excellent work. If you haven't checked it out, uh, definitely check it out. Talio Tech, check out his channel. Subscribe for sure. Hey, William, how you doing? How, how's it going? The problem with Apple machines is you always pay a premium for a PC that has the Apple brand. Yeah, you're definitely paying the Apple tax. There's no question about it. And, you know, that it is what it is. You know, what can I tell you? Uh, Marin is asking me if I can do a comparison between the MacBook Pro 13 and the Dell XPS 9300, with, which is what you, have, what you see here in my next video. I have to get a MacBook Pro 13, which I do intend to get into the studio. Of course, as you know, I have to go out of pocket for that. So any super chats or any kind of thing. And by the way, memberships is coming. I keep saying that. Uh, you will be able to become a member of my channel. I just have to finish doing the, the promo videos and all that, but it, it is coming, I promise. Uh, yes, I will do a showdown between those two. Yes, <laughs> Neil, <laughs> Tim does want that money. Uh, any, uh, Orson is asking a good question. Any, Andrew, any Windows counterparts have any good speakers as nearly released MacBook Pro 13? Not quite as good. Uh, the MacBook Pro has excellent speakers. Um, I'm hoping the Samsung Galaxy Book Flex has some pretty good speakers. We'll find out. I'm getting that tomorrow. Um, let me move this up a little bit. Um, th this actually has pretty decent speakers. I'm pretty impressed with these, even though they're downward facing speakers on the XPS 13 9300. Uh, they actually sound really good. I'm trying to remember, you know what a really good uh, speakers was the Huawei MateBook Pro X. I thought they had some really good speakers on that. And I'd like to see, and I'd like to get, I'd like to get Huawei to send me the refreshed model. Christian Ramirez, how are you? Didn't Apple say they were not using Intel processors? Maybe what they are have a leftover, make a buck. No, they, they used, they made that switch years ago. They are using Intel processors. What we are anticipating them is a move to ARM at some point. Um, probably next year. I don't anticipate it this year, of course. Uh, but yeah, I, I think they're going to move to ARM. And I think we're going to see a, a move uh, towards a hybrid of some sort between the iPad OS and the Mac OS. Uh, Professor Python is saying, I think the Surface 3 has okay speakers, not MacBook level, but not bad. Yeah, the Surface products have decent speakers, not great, uh, not the best, 
Uh, but Mac, the Apple has some fantastic speakers, and we'll see how these new ones are, of course. Why didn't Apple add Face ID in the MacBook Pro 2020? A lot of questions that are good tonight. Yeah, I mean, they could have put Face ID uh, in it. They didn't do it. Um, you have the Touch ID, but you don't have Face ID. Okay, well, that's, uh, that's Apple for you. They didn't want to do it. Handquake saying, sneaking out a keyboard fix under the guise of an update is a tad galling. You know, <laughs> it is. <laughs> I mean, this is ridiculous. I mean, look, and they didn't make a big show of it. They just released it. They didn't have a big, you know, production or big um, live stream or something. And it is a very minor update, in my opinion. But the fact that they're, they're trying to make this seem bigger than it is, in a sense, I just don't buy it. It's a keyboard upgrade that needed to be done years ago. Uh, they finally got around to it. They didn't improve the display, in my opinion. It's the same display with the same display technology. At least I'm not aware of anything, any kind of improvements. And I'm not really sure about any of the other things. The fact that they went from 128 to 256 to start, um, that should have been done years ago. They should never have offered a 128 gigabyte variant. That's, a, that's just a joke. I mean, you know what I'm saying. Okay. Professor Python, it feels like even if you don't have face, at least a non-potato webcam. And that's, that's, listen, Dell's guilty of it. I mean, Dell's guilty of it also. They, this is not a great webcam by any stretch. And um, I haven't seen a really good one. Although I got to say, I looked at, looked at it the other day, uh, last week, I guess. Uh, the Surface Laptop 3 has an excellent webcam. Uh, and the Surface Pro 7 had a pretty good one too. Uh, I think uh, uh, Microsoft's done a really good job in that regard. Is Intel i5-103 5G1 a good CPO for a budget? It seems like it has a weak GPU, UHD uh, graphics. It's okay. Um, it, it's not going to be great, uh, to be honest with you. It's not, it's not going to be as good as the Core i7. But it, it's fine for everyday tasks, for web browsing, email, Microsoft Office, you should be fine. Just in the name of the keyboard and stupid storage configuration is an upgrade that's Apple. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty much what it's looking like uh, once again. I mean, it just bewilders me. I mean, Apple gets it and they get away with it. And they're going to sell a ton of them. People are going to say, oh, the keyboard's great. And I'm going to call out the other, you know, creators out there. They, they're going to follow hook, line, and sinker. I'm not going to name names, but I think you know the, who they are. They're going to file hook, line, and sinker, how great it is. It's the best keyboard ever. That, But meanwhile, they were touting how great the uh, the butterfly keyboard was when it was actually horrible. I mean, I mean, it's just par for the course at this point. Orson is saying, Andrew, if 10 is for the new, if, is for the newly released MacBook Pro 3, what would you give to the new Dell XPS uh, 13? If 10 is for the newly released, what do you mean 10? What do you, what do you mean like a score a scale of one to 10? I would give this, if that was a 10, I'm giving this a 15, at least a 15. And this has been so good. And yeah, no, Dell sent me this, by the way, as a disclaimer, I have to give this back. Uh, but they told me, keep it long term, use it, report on it, do follow up reviews, do, you know, check in every so often, see how it is. And I got to say, it's better and better and better. And I got to, I'm really, really loving this laptop. <laughs> yeah, Fan, you want to give them the money to buy it? <laughs> um Best, Elliot's asking, best budget performance laptop under $1,000 for Photoshop and the like. Much better quality screen this week. Thank you. Yeah, I figured a few things out on the stream. Uh, I got rid of the, the green screen. I'm just going simple right now. I'll add some lighting, uh, some colored lights at some point. Um, so that'll be good. Oh, thank, this is very nice of you. Handquake, uh, handquake with a super chat. That gets you a special effect right now. Coming up. And we're also going to do this one as well. So, thank you very much for the $5 Super Chat. I really do appreciate it. It is uh, definitely uh, appreciated. You don't have to worry about that. That's for sure. 
Uh, again, anybody wants to do super chat, it goes back to the channel, helps me improve a lot of things, helps me make more videos, get more products, and so forth. All right, let's um, let's get the next question up. Yes, uh, XPS seventeen. Uh, my sources say June fifth in May. Sometime this May, we're going to see the fifteen, and sometime in June for the seventeen. How can I know? And Moet, how are you? <laughs> how can I know the keyboard is good or not? Um, if it's anything like the MacBook Air, if you, I'm assuming you're talking about the MacBook Pro. If it's anything like the MacBook Air 2020, we'll be fine. It's a very good keyboard, very good, and a big, big improvement over the butterfly keyboard, that's for sure. I'm glad to hear that, Neil. Uh, it's saying my stream looks fantastic. Also an unbiased content, what we are here, good vibes. I appreciate that. I really do, Neil. That means a lot to me. Am I going to cover the Asus Zephyrus G14? Uh, I spoke to uh, Asus. I contacted them and we, we communicated via email. Problem is right now to get me products is hard for them. The PR, that the people in the PR department will be getting me one as soon as some, one is available. But because of the COVID-19 pandemic, things are not running normally and there is a delay on that. But yes, I was told I will be getting it. Uh, let's go to the next question. Are the speakers, um, are the speakers on the new XPS 13 80% as good as the new MacBook Pro 13? Absolutely. They're very good. These are very good speakers on the XPS 13. Very good. If you're buffering, uh, fan, go, why don't you bump it down to 720p or 480p? I think that might solve your problem. I'm hoping. All right, what laptop would you recommend for a college student who also wants to do some video editing and note taking? Uh, I need more information, Beatrice. What is your budget? Um, the Dell XPS 13 is a very good laptop. If you are, do you want with pen support, go for the XPS 13 2 in 1. HP Spectre X360, which I have here, is another good one. So we got the, the Spectre. We got uh, the Yoga C940, all good choices for students. And again, you can get these on sale. Check out my reviews on these and my showdown that I did on all of these. You might find one that might fit your, your needs and might, you might catch your attention. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious too, Paul. Um, I, again, I spoke to Asus. I'm expecting to get a lot of stuff from them. We just have to be a little bit patient. So far, we have 72 of you in the live stream. If you've not subscribed to my channel, if you're new to my channel, check it out. Check out some of my reviews. I will be dropping a new review right after this live stream. It's the Lenovo ThinkPad. Uh, I have it here. The Lenovo ThinkPad L13 Yoga. And I'm impressed. Um, and it's a good price also. You can even get this under $1,000 depending on the SKU you get. Let me wipe it down. It is a major fingerprint magnet, but I'm going to be dropping this video right after. So you guys want some fresh content? It's on the way. This is the, uh, just a little teaser, really great keyboard. It's a great ThinkPad because it has, um, and I don't want to give away too much of the screen information without you watching. And there you saw really good speeds, a little teaser there. Um, Really beautiful display, full HD display. Look at the vibrancy of that. It's a full HD display. It's not 4K, but it's pretty good. Not perfect. There are some things I would improve, but definitely one to uh, take a look at. And again, I, I just finished the review. It's ready to drop right after this live stream. I'm gonna try something new. I wanna get as many people watching right away so the algorithm sees that and we'll serve it to more people. And if everybody, if you haven't hit the, the like button, I would really appreciate that because the more people that hit the like button, the more people will see this. So I really, really appreciate that. Right now, I think we have about 26 likes. So let's get those likes up. And if you guys wanna do super chats, I'm open for that. Help, anything to help the channel. Okay, so hoping the new Samsung Galaxy Book Flex has LTE, but I'm not holding my breath. Um, as far as uh, LTE, I don't know in the United States if it's gonna have LTE. 
I will be getting that tomorrow, uh, not with one with LTE, but I do have the 15.6 inch version coming. It's the same as the 13.3 as far as internals, as far as the battery. It's just bigger screen real estate and that's what I can get right away. Um, and I'm also curious to see how it would, it would be at a three plus pound, pretty light uh, 15 inch convertible and it looks really good. We could take a look at some of the specs right now. We could start looking at that in a moment. Um, but we can take a look at it. In fact, let's go take a look at it right now. And let me bring in this once again. And let me take me off there. Okay, so let me put there. Okay, let's go here. Okay, so what we're looking at here, again, a quality, uh, we're looking at the QLED display. So let's switch gears a little bit. Let's talk about the Samsung Galaxy Book Flex. Um, and let me, there I am. Okay, so I'll just put myself over here. That's fine, let's make it a little bit smaller. Okay, so the Galaxy Book Flex has the QLED display, as we know. Um, it's uh, supposed to get brighter than an OLED display. It has to be very, it's gonna be not quite as vibrant, maybe. I don't know, I'm really looking forward to it. It's coming tomorrow. Um, and let me just take a look at some of the price points on this because it's pretty interesting. I got mine from Best Buy. Again, Samsung is not giving me a review unit. I asked, they're not giving it to me. So I had to go out of pocket and it's not cheap. Now the one I got was the 15.6 inch version and I believe it was $1399 with tax. It's over $1500 here in Nevada. It's a lot of money, but I'm hoping the display is worth it. I'm hoping the have, having the S Pen is worth it. I don't know if I'm gonna keep it. We'll find out, but I was able to get one. It's already on its way to the studio and I'm excited. I really, uh, I've been really wanting this. It's in royal blue. It has the S Pen. It looks pretty interesting. Uh, a lot of people are asking about the, the Ryzen X360 of HP. I'm trying to get a review unit on that. Uh, Miles Lee is saying, is the memory card on the uh, the book Flex Expandable, does it have an SD card slot? Uh, I don't remember. Let's, uh, let's see if we can find out here. Uh, I'll, I'll let you guys know, I'm gonna be getting this in tomorrow and I might, I'm thinking of maybe even doing a live unboxing. So just be aware that that might happen, it might not, I don't know, depending on my schedule. Um, it has, now the one thing it's interesting, it doesn't have uh, Windows Hello. to the road mic how's that how's it sounding now sorry about that uh this ran out you should be you should be hearing me now this microphone and i'll bring it up um yeah no it's coming back on you'll get it just give me a moment is there sound now you should be hearing it now You should be hearing me now because you're, you're like 30 seconds behind me. So you'll, you'll be hearing it. 
Okay. See, now we're good. Okay. <laughs> we're back to this mic. Um, I've not had a live stream that didn't have any technical difficulties. I should have charged it before I, I went on. In fact, that's what I'll do now. Hold on. Yeah, so this was a video mic go, and I'm really liking it, but I should have charged it. And sorry about that, people. I hope I didn't lose too many of you. All right, so that while that's charging, we're back to our uh, USB mic, which is fine. Um, let me just see something real quick. Okay, it looks like everything's okay. All right, so let's get back to your questions. QLED display must be brighter than 1,000 nits. I don't think this one's going to be 1,000 nits. I think it's more like 600. In fact, I think it has a, uh, a button you press. I think Function F9 will bring up outdoor readability mode, which really br bumps up the brightness. Uh, the, the, the Dell XPS 13 has a, can get up to 600 nits on its own. doesn't need anything. This thing is pretty amazing. Um, yeah, let's talk about the, uh, so the tech, tech realm is saying, um, the NV, the HP NV X 360 is already available, uh, which I'm trying to get a hold of, of a re review unit. So have patience, people. I will be getting it at some point. Orson is asking, oh, sorry about that. Orson is asking, uh, is the camera on this XPS 13 horrible? No, it's not horrible. It's not gr not great. Um, let me give you an example here. If you can see it on here. So, and let me switch cameras here. So this is what it looks like. I mean, you can see it right here. No, you can't see it. Sort of, you can see it like that. It's not great. <laughs> it's not great, but it's, it's, it's not terrible either. It'll definitely do zoom. It'll do Skype. It'll do anything you need it to do. It's just not going to be, um, the best quality, but the fact that they put such a thin, um, such a, uh, I said they put a camera at all in such a thin bezel is a pretty amazing engineering feat. I've said that in the past, of course. Is the Honor Magic Book, Dimitri's asking, uh, the Honor Magic Book 14 a good budget laptop for $600? Yes. Uh, I've, I've been trying to get a, a review unit from Honor, who is a subsidiary, of course, of Huawei, and I haven't had any luck. But yeah, it's a definitely would be a good, from what I can tell and from what I've read, it would definitely be good for that. Uh, no updates on the foldables. The one we saw at CES, if you watched my channel, you know I got a chance to look at the foldable from um, in, uh, Dell and with the two foldables from Dell, the one from Lenovo ThinkPad, the X1 Fold. Uh, I haven't heard anything from them. And my guess is because of the pandemic, it's going to be delayed. I don't think we're going to get that right away. And so, I, you know, that was one thing I was wondering also. But again, because of the pandemic, we can't expect too much. Uh, right now. Okay, so okay, which laptop has the best camera? That's a good question, Fabri Fabricio. Um, I think the best one is the Surface Laptop Three. It was a very, very good camera. The Surface Pro Seven had a very good camera. I think Microsoft made some really excellent cameras. I think the one in the Surface Pro Seven might be the best. It is a 1080p webcam. It's really, really good. You know, also had a good one. Uh, the H and it's expensive, of course. The HP ZBook uh, 15 G6 had a really good webcam as well. I think it was also 1080p. I heard the OLED display is actually not much, not that impressive. It's similar to OLED with 400 nits normally and 600 with outdoor mode. Miles will find out. I got one coming. It's on its way. It'll be here tomorrow. So, in fact, let me just check UPS because I'm obsessed that way. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm scheduled for tomorrow. It's already been picked up. So I should be getting it uh, sometime tomorrow. And I'm thinking of maybe even doing a, a maybe an on, a live unboxing. We'll see. I don't know. So just stay tuned. 
is there a Windows laptop that is the same shape as the MacBook Pro 13 square with the same height and all, all sides? Uh, I think the closest, and correct me if I'm wrong, is the Huawei MateBook X Pro. It looks the most to me like a MacBook from color-wise, shape-wise, aspect rate ratio-wise almost. Well, not quite. That's a three to two, I believe. So, so that might be one to take a look at if you want a Windows equivalent of a MacBook Pro. Uh, I'm a big fan of the Dell XPS 13, having used the new one, the 9300 here, for, I don't know, what, three months, maybe less. Uh, it's been maybe two months, three months. It's been really, really good. I got to say, they've hit a home run with this one. Is there any problem if the laptop speakers are on the downside? Generally, I don't love downward-facing speakers, Dimitri, but... Um, but they did a good job on the Dell. It's just how they're implemented, how good these speakers are. That will play a big role in the sound, of course. So the Spectre 15, that's right, has a 1080p 30 frames per second. I can't wait, Paul, to get that new one in. I'm expecting it end of May. So towards the end of May. So we'll see. Uh, it's going to be the 15. Uh, I think I got the OLED, I'm, I'm not mistaken. When would they put a 4K camera on the new XPS 13? I don't know if there's a camera available that's 4K that's small that could fit here. I, I, I'm not aware of any, and I'm probably that's the limitation. Uh, I'm sure if they could put it in, they would at some point. But again, I'm not. I haven't heard anything. But at some point, they're going to have to get it to that you know 4K level because this is just ridiculous. And, and you know what? Especially since we're all working from home. Uh, and this may be the new reality for the foreseeable future. We need better webcams, that's for sure. And by the way, the price gouging continues on Amazon, b &H Photo, with all these third-party sellers as, as, and other places where they're charging uh, three, dollars $400 for a $50 to $100 webcam. And that just tells, speaks volumes of what where we are right now. Okay. All right. Yes, I'm getting a uh, fan. I didn't get any razor yet. I've been in contact with the PR people. They are going to be sending me one. So I don't have one yet. It will be coming. What did I say was the best budget performance laptop for Photoshop? And I, oh, sorry about that, Elliot. Um, okay, so Photoshop, it depends on how intensive you, how many layers are you doing? Um, this is actually pretty good. Under a thousand dollars, eight hundred and under. This would this isn't quite eight hundred. This is closer to the thousand. This is the L thirteen from the ThinkPad line, the Yoga. Um, that's a good question. I have to think a little bit more on that, Elliot, because eight hundred dollars or less, um, you might find some on sale, like on the Envy line for HP. You might find one. Some on the Dell, Inspiron line, maybe. Uh, let me think a little bit on that, and we'll 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 get back to that. I promise. <laughs> maybe not on this live stream, but maybe I might do a budget showdown. Uh, I've been thinking of doing something like that. Is there any noticeable difference between a 340 and 400 nit display? Not terribly noticeable. A little bit. I can. I, I've seen so many displays that I can tell between. I can actually almost. I'm getting so good at this that I can, before I even measure it. And that's over there, my calibrator. Um, I can tell you exactly in the range of between 25 and 50 nits, I, I'm pretty good at it. I know when something's below 300. I know when something's definitely above 300. I know when it's above 400. I know when it's above 500. So it's a little bit of a difference. You will notice it a little bit, but not much. Anything over 300, and I've said this in the past in my reviews, anything over 300 is fine. You'll be good on that. And it's even better when it's a matte display as opposed to a glossy display. Matte display will do even better uh, with less... Uh, brightness in terms of nits. Hi, right, Christos. Glad you can join us. We have 81 of you in the live stream. Uh, just tuned in. How are the speakers? I think the B&O on the HP sounds the best. Have you listened to the new HP NV32 all in one? Uh, okay. I, <laughs> I do have it actually. And I'm embarrassed to say I've had it for about a month. It is fantastic. I'm not done with my review. I will be doing that review. It's a it's an it's an iMac killer. I'm hoping to get it out by this weekend. I'm almost done. HP asked me about it. Uh, they've sent it to me. But I got so inundated with all the laptops that I didn't want to forget about it. I wanted to do it justice. 
HP Envy 32 has some really excellent speakers. It sounds fantastic. And you'll 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 see my review on that. No, but that's a good idea, Handquake. But I guess when they open up, uh, I haven't been to the store in the Link, believe it or not. Here in Las Vegas, the Link is a place on the Strip. Um, no, I haven't. But that's a good good uh, point. I will make it a point once we're able to go back to normal. Well, somewhat normalcy, I guess. But thank you. That's a good I good idea. Uh, fan is asking. Uh, Precision for creators, Inspiron for people on a budget, Latitude for business users. That is correct. That's correct. Precision is for creators. Inspiron is for people on a budget. Yeah, that is that is exactly well put. Well put. Okay, I think a budget showdown would be really good on this channel. Your showdowns are done very well. Uh, you also, also would love a live unboxing of the Samsung book if your schedule permits, obviously. Thank you, Elliot. Um, I'm... I might do it. I might do one tomorrow. It de a couple of things. It depends, A, my schedule, because I'm kind of busy right now. I do have a job that I do have to go to despite the pandemic. It's an essential business, so I have to go. And um, But if I get it early enough where I can have enough lead time, yes, I will definitely do that. I'm looking forward. This is one I've been getting a lot of questions for the past few months. Where is the... Galaxy Book Flex, I'm, I'm a little bit blurry. It goes in and out, the focus. Um, but um, I've been getting a lot. Well, what about the Galaxy Book Flex? What about the Galaxy Book Flex? Well, I'm getting it. So stay tuned, people. Okay. Uh, may I ask how is the XPS 13 9300 compared to the XPS 13 2 and one 7390? Battery life, performance, fan noise, heat dissipation. Uh, good question, Potato Tan 09. Um, very similar devices. Screens are very similar. The difference being the uh, XPS 2-in-1, 13 2-in-1, uh, does have pen support. The 9300 does not. That's it. And this is a clamshell of, of course, that other one. The 2-in-1 is a convertible laptop. So that's one big difference. Uh, battery life uh, is a little bit better on this one. Not by much, though. Uh, check out my review of the, the 9300. You'll see it in the battery comparison chart. If you haven't done so, check it out. Heat dissipation is very similar. Again, they're thin and light laptops. If you're really, really, really pushing it, they will thermal throttle. That's just the nature of a thin and light laptop. But for the most part, doing everyday tasks, they're very similar in terms of keeping cool. They're relatively cool. The fans rarely kick on when you're doing basic and normal tasks. It's only when you're really pushing it, it will start to thermal throttle and the fans will kick in. Can I do a 15-inch version laptops of the January 2020 showdown with four laptops? Can you do a 15-inch version? I do plan on that, Van. Um, I'm just waiting on a few of them to come in. I want to get the new 15-inch Spectre X360. I want the Dell XPS 15, the new version coming. So we're waiting on that. There's no sense in doing the 2019. I don't have them. I want to do it on the new ones. So stay tuned. I promise you it will be coming. Greetings from Vancouver. How are you, Epico? Nice to see you. Where everything is pricey. Yes, everything is pricey. And the pandemic is not helping. <laughs> People are losing their jobs. People are not able to buy the big ticket items like they could before. So it looks like my thing is charging good. Okay. Um, now, one behind the scenes uh, thing I want to talk about. I know I had a few technical difficulties with the camera the last few times. I was using the Sony A6300. It has a, it's been notorious for overheating over the years. And I tried to use it in a live stream because I love its beautiful live focus. I switched to the uh, Lumix GH4 from Panasonic. That's the one you're looking at on right now. Uh, the focus is not as good as the one on the Sony, but this is a great camera. And so that's why it's looking a little bit different tonight. I'm also changed it up. I'm not using a green screen this time around. I'm just going with a, just a regular background. I will be getting some different lighting coming in. So we are going to step it up, I promise you. Yeah, the Spectre will, in, in Canadian, I don't know how much it'll be in Canadian, but it definitely will be more money. Somebody's at the door. Let me just check to see who's here. Some You're all live here. I don't know who's at the door. My ring doorbell is ringing. So, yeah, it will definitely um, be more expensive in Canada. You hear my dog because somebody's at the door. All right, so just ignore my dog, Max. Uh, will you collaborate with Elsa from 
I mean, Lisa from Mobile Tech of the Future, both of you have great content. I appreciate that. Uh, I do plan on doing a collaboration at some point. I don't know with Lisa. Um, I don't even know if she knows who I am. I'm sure she does. I don't know. I love her content. I think she's great. I uh, would love to do something with her. Uh, she's, I believe, in Texas. I'm here in Las Vegas. Who knows? Maybe we'll do something. But her videos are excellent. I really, really, uh, I'm, I'm, I have a lot of respect for her. She's been doing it a really long time. Do you think that the upcoming XPS 15 and 17 have better speakers than that of the new MacBook 13 and 16? Um, I don't know, Orson. Uh, we'll, one way we'll find out is when we get it into the studio, we will definitely find out. I'm looking forward to uh, the XPS 15 and 17. I really, really am, as well as, well as the Spectre X360 15-inch as well. I didn't change the studio. I took out the green screen. <laughs> I just want a smoother. I don't want anything bogging anything down. I wanted a smoother experience this time around. I know we had some difficulties um, last couple of weeks, but I think we're doing okay. Minus my mic cutting out, my lav mic cutting out. So I switched back to the USB mic, but I think we're okay. It was only for about a minute. No, so I didn't change the studio. I'm just changing it up a little bit in terms of what you're seeing. All laptops should have Ergo Lift Hinge. We've seen the Ergo Lift Hinge on, well, we just saw it on the HP NV Wood Edition. I really like that. The Ergo Lift Hinge on the um, the Asus ZenBook, uh, what was it? The ZenBook Pro 14 it has that, the 15. It gives you a raised typing angle when you're typing. It's pretty good. Uh, so that that's coming. All right, so for those that are joining us late, 77, you and now are in the live stream, I will be debuting a new video right after this stream is finished. I want to end at around um, 8 o'clock Pacific time. We're now almost at an hour. I want to end around 8 o'clock so we can get it at a decent time. So for those people that are not watching on the live stream, they can also enjoy a new video from me. Um, or I can just do it in the morning. It's up to you guys. But I wanted you guys to watch the new video right off the bat to get more views right out of the gate that would definitely help uh youtube algorithm serve it to more people so if you haven't hit the like button please hit the like button if you haven't subscribed please do please do so it all helps it all leads to channel growth um ads is asking a really good question what do i think about the ipad pro as a computer um I, I was against it for the longest time, and it's still not there, in my opinion. But we're getting closer to the point where if they put Final Cut Pro, then I would be really happy with that. If they put Final Cut Pro, a full version of Final Cut Pro, not some watered-down version, then we might be talking. But until they can do that, for me, it won't work. It's just a good media consumption device um, and, and so forth. And uh, I have it right here, of course as you can see in the secondary overhead cam. And I'm watching the live stream at the same time you guys are. Um, yeah, it, it can definitely do it. Uh, at some point, it's going to evolve even more. I think there are some limitations that are still there that prevent it from being a full-fledged laptop. Now, the Magic Keyboard, to me, is overpriced, although it's very gotten very good reviews in terms of functionality and, and quality. But to me, to pay $350 for the bigger one or $300 for the 11-inch one is to get, again, Apple over overcharging the customer for something just for profit. And that's what they're in the business to do is to make money. But to just make it so out of reach for so many people is ridiculous. But a lot of people will buy it even though they really shouldn't. Um, there are some good alternatives. I know Bridge makes a good keyboard and so forth. Uh, I definitely agree. I definitely agree, um, Handquake. They definitely need to clean up the filing system. That's one big limitation, in my opinion. So definitely would be... Um, maybe you missed it, but what are your thoughts on the new MacBook Pro? I think $1,800 with the base model is a lot of money. Um, with the 10th gen, right. Uh, I agree. And if you caught Fabricio, I agree 100%. I am totally in agreement with you as far as Apple overcharging the customer and not delivering on the price. In other words, you're not getting value for money, in my opinion. They put a keyboard on there that they should have had from the beginning. They should have never gone to the uh, butterfly keyboard. That was a colossal disaster. It was a colossal failure. It was not a good decision by Apple. And then 
to double the storage. Okay, that's fine of the entry level price, but you're still giving us eighth generation specs at the $1299 price point. That's embarrassing. That's a disgrace. And then if you really want the 10th generation, the current processor, you got to pay $1,800. You're not even getting um, anything of real value, in my opinion. It's overpriced. Now, for the same price, you can get the XPS 13, which to me is a better value, even though it's very expensive. It's as premium as the MacBook Pro, but it has a better display. It has a touch display. It has thinner bezels. It has a better look in my opinion just my opinion of course um it really brings a lot to the table so when you compare apples to apples or oranges to oranges it is what it is right so that's my opinion people love the macbook pro i love it too i just don't think it's worth that price for what you're getting i don't think it's a big deal i don't think this upgrade is such a big deal so i agree with you fabricio uh epico saying dell is even worse the spl line Dell is even worse. The XPS line is, I'm not sure what you're trying to say, Epico, but the XPS is looking pretty good right now. What about the speakers on the new 16-inch MacBook Pro? Um, I actually have one. I'm co actually coming to the studio. I decided that's going to be uh, my editing machine uh, coming going forward. Uh, I will have a review of it. It's been out a while, but... I'm thinking of maybe waiting a little bit, maybe because of the, I'm hearing rumors of an updated 16 inch. So I don't know what to do, but price is going to be a consideration. So I might get a good deal. I actually have one in mind and I don't want to speak too much about it yet, but stay tuned. Dell only uses Intel i3 in the business models. Um, they use a lot of the i3s. They do. Uh, and for businesses, it's fine. For the average consumer, I'd stay away from the i3. And neither is Apple scarce. Every other high schooler is tingling on their iPhone. Yep. Definitely correct, Neil. Does the XPS still have four gigabytes RAM configuration? I hope they've stopped offering that. Um, they, I don't think they do. They might, but never go for that one. Never go for that one. Always get a minimum of eight. Get 16 if you can. And don't get an i3. Uh, what I meant was Dell sells the XPS 13 with i3 as the base model. Yeah, they do. It's offered. But I would, and I mentioned that in the video, don't, don't get the i3. Don't ever get the i3. Don't get it for the MacBook Air. Don't get it for the Dell XPS 13. Not in 2020, not with four gigabytes of RAM. Just stay away. How are you liking the live stream? We got good bandwidth according to my statistics here. Have you tried to plug an external GPU into a laptop? I have in the past. I don't have a GPU to test out right now, but I do plan on getting one very soon uh, because I do want to see, I do get that a lot as far as how do you game on these ultra portables that have Thunderbolt 3 ports? Well, that's how you do it. So I will have something coming very soon. So stay tuned. Yeah, the 16 inch MacBook Pro speakers are phenomenal. They are. I've heard them many times. And of course, the 13 inch will be no different. They're very good. 16 are really, really good. Even the 15, when I had the 2016 MacBook Pro 15, some of the best speakers I've ever heard on a laptop, even back then. Yep, I agree. All right, so we're at over an hour. Uh, I do have a video I want to drop. Let me get that ready. Um, just give me a second. I want to get that ready to be released. And I don't know if you guys want to, are you guys, let me know, are you guys up for a video? As soon as this is done, are you guys up for it? Let me get the link ready. I hope it's a good video. You know, I always get nervous every time I release one. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> it's a hit or miss. It's the Lenovo ThinkPad L13 Yoga. Fan is asking, the SureView privacy display is dimmer, so it should have more battery life, but no. Are you guys talking about the one I have here? The Where is it? This is the, and this is the, another review coming this week. Um, this is the, uh, the HP Elite Dragonfly with the SureView Reflect display. We'll, we'll, we'll talk more about that coming very soon. 
All right, people, I'm going to put in the link. Um, it's not live. It's I'm going to go live in about 15 seconds. So I'm going to get the link ready. I'm going to, and I want you all to watch it so we can get, get off to a good start. Let me set it to public. Done. So we're going to go live on this. Let me save that. And I'm going to put it in the link right now. And here is the link to my new video. And I will put it in the, the video description as well, but if I can get there. <laughs> so it should be live. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Let me just get to the video here and then we'll sign off so you can go watch it. Okay, so I just put it in. Let me just put it in the uh, videos here. Just give me a second. And I'm opening it up and go to the details. It's running a little slow, my computer, because we're live streaming, but I want to get the link in this video, actually. What am I doing? I'm putting it in the wrong place. Uh, I just put it in the chat for those that want to watch it right now. Uh, I see some of you, 72 and you in the live stream. Uh, let me go to live here. And I'm going to be putting it in a couple of seconds here if this computer would ever cooperate. So it's in the the link is now in the stream. So I'm going to save that. It's the let me just write what it is. Lenovo Think Bear with me. ThinkPad L13 Yoga. Okay, people. I just uh saved it into the video description of this live stream. So let's get that going. Watch it. I'm going to sign off here, people. I, I had a really good time. Uh, good to see you. Uh, Tim, how are you? Good. To, I didn't know you were here. If I would have said it, hi to you sooner. Uh, thank you, William. Once again, another great live stream, everybody. Check out the video. It's in the link below. It's dropping right now. Um, Anyway, we will see you in the next video. I might even do a live unboxing of the Samsung Galaxy Book Flex that's coming. Make sure if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do so. Um, it really helps the algorithm. And hit the like button if you haven't already done so. Uh, I'm also uh, going to get a lot of other stuff. I got the LG Gram coming. I got a whole bunch of stuff. So just make sure if you're not subscribed, make sure you're subscribed. And good to see everybody. Good to see Paul. Good to see everybody out there. I can't get to everybody. You know, Tech Realm, you were really contributing. Fan, you were really contributing. Everybody, you've been fantastic. Ads, I don't want to forget you. If I know I'm forgetting some of you, but I will see you guys in the next video. And we have to sign off with this, of course. Coming up. Because I do have a lot of things coming up anyway i will see you in the next video have a good night everybody make sure you go right over to the video in the link below uh check out my new video i i really wanted to do well have a good night everyone bye bye